What is good friends, back with more World Cup, we got ABR's second game and he's playing false from Dimoshiania and ABR brings a Volcaron plus Mega Heracross squad, this looks pretty similar to a team I've used actually in the shot on live, um, I didn't have a Volk and a Heracross but the other four ones were the same if I recall correctly False brings Mega Pinsir Mega Pinsel actually, holy fuck. If that's a Spadaf Celestial, then Mega Pinsel puts in a lot of work. Like, he just has to weaken. He has a mechanism to, like, weaken or get rid of Celestial. And then Pinsel puts in the work. Like, it basically gets a kill if it comes in on. on Heracross or on Magnazone after Celestial dies. So, he leads off with Lari. Maybe I basically had to lead with something that prevents Pinsel from just getting off a hit. Completely understandable. What are big threats um, from ABR's side to the opposing team? He just goes for Draco turn 1 and I think that's... Is that Specs? If it's the Dev Mew? No, I think it's just a... Is it Max HP Mew? I assume it's just Max HP Mew, yeah. And the Ladi is Scarf. The only way that it's Specs is if the Mew is like Max the Dev, but that's, they don't run that. But let's say it's Scarf Ladios. Draco does 38, that's a careful Mew. Um, yeah, if the Mew is Fist of a Scarf, Draco does 52 to 63. He doubles out into Volcarona, but he gets in the pins there. Really nice play getting in the pins and knowing even if he Dracos again, it's minus 2. And ABR most likely was not staying in there. Volcarona was potentially the switch and just predicting the softball from the Mew. So yeah, that was an aggressive play from Falls. I think he's just gonna attack here. Doubling into Magnuson is a bit too risky. Oh, this is a tough spot for ABI. What is he gonna do here? I mean, if he's with Dev Magnuson and the. I mean, Spadaf sells Steeler and the Magnuson is not Specs. He can actually beat it 1v1. But the Magnuson should be Specs because the goal is to get rid of. The goal is to get rid of Sellers Dealer, right? And he does have Keldio plus Tabu Bulu to check Ash Greninja. I assume it's gonna be Scarf Keldio, obviously, on Fault's team. Either Rocks Lander or Rocks Mew. But I'm leaning towards Rocks Landris and Z move Tabu Bulu. I actually kind of like Fault's team, but <laughs> I mean Heracross doesn't have he doesn't have good Heracross switch-ins, But the thing is, Mew should outspeed Heracross. Like most Heracross want Adamant because you need Adamant to speed creep stuff. So Mew would be able to wisp it before Heracross can attack it, and uh, Pinsir also beats it. And Lando still has Intimidate, so it's not like Heracross completely destroys for, um, his team. But Heracross is kind of threatening. But on the other side, if he doubles on the Heracross and the pins it, it's always very bad for IBR. Okay, so he gets a Ladi in on the Stellar Fox. As he, he brought in the Landers on the Stellar Stealer. IBR doesn't want to take any damage on his Stellar Stealer. Like in case this Landers was Z-move, but it's pretty obvious that it's the... F um, this is the Star Fox setter, yeah. Like, I mean, it could still be Z move, but I'm, um, like I said, I think it's Z move Bulu. I think this Landers is defensive, yeah. I mean, I th this, the Magnuson could be a Salt Vest. Majuna is still a huge problem. Like, he has Mew, but, like, I think he's just gonna U turn here, yep. Which confirms defense of Lando. The Draco damage also looks like. I think Max HP Lando to me, yeah. So now the Mew gets to come in and he gets a um, Southpaw or Will Wisp.
And this is a tough spot for ABR because if he doubles into Pinzerbrick in the Volcarona, okay, it's not Scarf Lottie from ABR's side, which means it's gonna be a Scarf Garchomp. And it's either Z move Lottie or Z move Volcarona. I know that ABR likes Shari Volk and he's used it in old OST. So this could be Z move one and the Volk could be Charlie, but. <laughs> Yeah, not sure about the item on this. The Draco didn't do much to the Muse, so... He could still be Soldu, but I think he doesn't have a bo damage boosting item. It kinda makes me think that it's Z-Move Lari. But yeah, I think Falls is just gonna click... Return here, or double switch into Magna Zone. The thing is, what if ABR just tries to sack something else because he wants to keep his Cellar Stealer healthy and falls double into Magna Zone and it doesn't work out? So I probably would just go for return here. Yeah. I mean, the Lottie's at minus two, even if it has a Z move, it won't be able to touch your pins there. So yeah, he just goes for the safe play. And do get see it's um, that does nothing. It has 21 to sell a stealer. I do want to know if that is a defensive or a spadef sell a stealer. He's just gonna go for a leech seed here, I assume. Yeah, I think that sell stealer has some fist death because it would do um 27 to 32 if the sell stealer would only be max HP at the 21 so. If he's max defense bold, or like just a defense boosting nature, yeah, he could be max defense. That's 20 to 23. So that makes a lot of um, sense. But it means he's max defense, which means, which means he's gonna lose to Magna Zone 1 on 1 unless he has Earthquake. Because even if the Magna Zone is Assault Vest, since the Steeler has Fist Death, t is gonna do so much damage. Like overall, he has probably fifth death Mew for Medicham, but like a little bit of Spadef, fifth death Landris, and I think he has to be. Like I thought about this for a while now. I wasn't sure at first, but I think he has to be AB Mana Zone. Cause Greninja still goes completely in on his team. Like Keldeo can only come in like once, maybe twice, but it's a bit iffy. It's, like you never know Greninja set. Like Greninja is such a wild Pokemon. Like you can just make the. Adapt Greninja set how you need it so that so like what your team is weak to you just adapt it. Let's say you, you, your team is weak to Mew, just put Dark Pots on Protein Grand, you're weak to Kelly, you put extra Sensory. They carry Gunk Shot most of the time, that hits Bulu anyway. Why am I lagging? This is annoying. I don't want I don't want to catch dislikes again. I caught dislikes the other day because I think I was it was because I was lagging. It goes hard into Heracross. Not sure if I, if he predicted the Z move. But I assume maybe I was just gonna go for pin missile. Uh, most Tapu Bulus run adamant. Uh, Tapu Bulu should still be able to outspeed Heracross. So ABR might not mega evolve here. Because if he Mega Evolves, he's probably slower. Oh, if he Mega Evolves, it's a potential speed tie. So if this is not Tapu Bulu, he potentially won a speed tie there. And he gets rid of the Mega Heracross. Yeah, I think I wouldn't have Mega Evolved to get some damage on his Bulu. So his best play here is... Um, like his best way of arranging this. It's either the Subtle Stealer, but that's also risky because there's a Magnezone in the back. The rocks that falls got up again are really nice because if he goes into Volk, he has to take the rocks. And like he... He didn't want to go sell um, Subtle Stealer because of the Magnezone in the back. Yeah, this is tough. Maybe I might lose this. But he's forced to Fire Blast here. It's, I think it's his best play because if Kelly comes out, he weakens it. If he actually goes for Giga Drain here and catches the Kelly on his switch, ABR looks like a god because it's Grassy Drain boosted. 
Does Falls need this at this point? That's the question. Does he need it? Because I don't know if that was the play. He goes for his Z move. If it's Shadow Psyche, this is gonna get blown. Oh, it's Savage Spinner. Wow. It's Z Bug Buzz. So ABR is always using wild sets. So that the reason he went for that, I don't know. It would have obviously killed the bull and he didn't have to risk a potential fire blast. It would have killed the Mew, but he was never going Mew there. So like I think the only point the only reason you would ever go for that is you don't want to risk fire blast. So that So he's not Z move Lari then. So it's probably Z move. I just I should have called Draco versus Mew. Like I knew that it still could have been Soldu because Soldu only boosted the damage by 1.2. So that's definitely the roll that he got was definitely still in the range. So that is that he could be Soldu. So he's Bug Boss Vault Corona, which is for people. Because people sometimes run as Lari to check Vault or Titar. I think Savage Spinout might be to get rid of Mega Tyranitar after a little bit of prior damage. Thankfully, we got rid of the lag. Like, I completely understand. Oh my god, what? I mean, I. I understand that Ladi was coming out there, which is pretty obvious, but like... Wouldn't the double into Tapu Bulo have been better if you break the Ladi? I don't know if you break the Ladi. Oh yeah, he, I think he predicted that... I think he predicted the Gas Room, because the Gas Room can also come out on the Kelio. Because Kelio is most likely Scarf over Specs. And I do want to know if Draco has a chance to kill... I will call... Uh, Soul do Ladi. I mean, I have life up in the Kalk, but I'll change it real quick. He goes hard into Magnezone, predicting a Draco Meteor. I mean, this has a lot of damage, so this is not AV Magnezone. I thought it would be AV, but it's not. Wow. He's gonna go for Flash Cannon or Volt Switch. And yeah, that's definitely Specs damage. It has 63, and also the Draco that way more than AV Zone would take. Draco at 51. What the fuck? I wanna call it that. Magnezone. I think he ch switched that move earlier, right? Let's say Soul do. I assume the Magnezone is gonna be like really offensive, maybe like really speedy. Because it took a lot from the Draco. The Draco does 44 to 52. So he either got a high roll and the Magnezone was the standard spread or the Magnezone had less HP. So he went back into Volcarona knowing that this is locked into Flash Can. And he makes a really nice double into Pinsir because ABR was either going into... No, ABR could have gone into um, Celesteela there, honestly. So what did ABR predict here? I'm not really sure. What what did he lose from going Celesteela because the Magnezone was locked in anyway? That's a bit weird to me. Okay, this doesn't work out for fault at all. He goes into Magnezone predicting the Celesteela. But ABR goes into Garchomp instead. Garchomp would have been able to take a frustration, would have been able to... I don't know if it would have been able to take the combination of frustration in, um, into quick attack. Yeah, high roll, quick attack... High roll into mid roll would have killed. But I can completely understand ABS play in case he wanted to go into Magnezone and this also has a chance to live, return into quick attack. Um, so what happened here? He went back into Volcarona knowing that Falls was never staying in there. So he booked the the Tapu Bulu slash the Mew. That was a nice play on ABR's part. And he misses a Fire Blast, which sucks. So I assume it's going to be Quiverdance, Bug Blast, Fire Blast, and then probably Hidden Power Ground on the last slot. Could still be Giga Drain, not really sure about the last slot. But I think Hidden Power Ground makes some sense. I mean, he has ways to deal with Heatran, but like if Heatran is Bloom Doom versus ABR's team, it just kills the Gastron, then he only has Garchomp left to deal with it, so I think this would be HP ground. He wasn't a top of Wulu, predicting the Gastron stop this man, holy fuck. Wait. <clears throat> yeah, so on Keldeo, ABR would either go into Lari or into... He would either go into Lari... Or into Gastron on Kelly, so doubling into Tapu Bulu is a really good play. 
And he always should count another crush, so subbing there's an amazing play because now he gets a stone edge off. Abiyash force into Celeste Dealer. And he is kinda forced to um flamethrower. Yeah, flamethrower is the best play. Because you don't want to give the Magnus on a free switch in. And you wanna go for a move that is able to break the type of blue substitute, obviously. And I can see Fords just going into the Mew here because he doesn't want to risk the Magnum Zone. I mean, I was thinking about this for a while. He just goes for SD. So he just wants to weaken the Subtle Stealer. Um, I think ABR is going to either go for Heavy Slam here or sack something and then try to revenge this. with uh, If he has Poison Jab on Garchomp, that's an option. But I think he's just going to go for Heavy Slam. So I could see Falls going hard into Magnezone because he baited him to go for Heavy Slam. Because Flamethrower doesn't Oko Tapu Bulu. Like I can run a Kulk for you guys. But like most of you notice, like Flamethrower doesn't Oko Tapu Bulu. So then Heavy Slam does 81 to 96. So f uh, Heavy Slam is a roll. He goes for sub again. I don't know why he subbed again. Because he, ha he could have, he had a chance to live a Heavy Slam, but now he doesn't live anymore. That was weird. That was in case um, maybe I wanted to double up, I assume, on the Magnus zone. That was weird. I don't think ABR could have afforded to double. Could afford to double there. <laughs> ABR never misplays. But yeah, what I wanted to talk about a little bit. Okay, they're, they're gonna play. I'm gonna focus on the game. He flames throughout because after the substitute, no, he still wouldn't have killed. But he's a fifth death Celeste here, so he would have been able to t take a hit. So he's still at full here. I completely understand flame throwing because, I mean, the best thing that Bulu can do to Steela is uh, Stone Edge, and a plus two Stone Edge won't do too much since we know this is a fifth death Celeste Steela. A plus two Stone Edge from a. Type of bulu would have done how much? Um, I assume he's just gonna go. I, I can see ABR staying in here because Falls might double into something that beats Vol Corona, which would be Pinsir. He doubles into Pinsir. Did ABR stay in? Well, he was in the guest run. I think I would have stayed in there for maybe R. Because if if Falls goes for Will O Wisp and gives you a free surge into Vol Corona, it's an annoying pos it's an annoying position for him. I mean, he still could have gone into Keldeo because he dodged the Fireballs last time. So I guess it still would have been a fine play. But I think the, the Pinsir was pretty obvious there, so I probably would have just gone for Lead Sheet or Flamethrower again. Then then again, Celestia is, so, is so valuable in this game. He does get the burn on the Mew, which will cancel out the leftovers, and he will get obviously burned by the Synchronize. Reverse burned, however you want to say it, or the double burn. But yeah, plus two stone edge from Tapu Bulu. I wanted to cut that earlier. Uh, 21 to 25, pitiful damage. Oh, that's no neutral, never mind. A uh, plus two it does uh, 42 to 50. So yeah, that actually does a decent chunk. So yeah, I don't understand why Falls subbed again with his Bulu. I know that he wants to keep it. But like, that was a bit weird. Like, if anything, your heart switch out. I don't think subbing again is the play. Because ABR was obviously going for him like an attack there, I don't think he was doubling out the Celestealer. Stealer. So he double scalds in case wants in case Falls wants to make a double. In case uh, Falls wants to double into Pinzer, predicting the Vol Corona because Vol Corona will most likely get a free switch in on Mew. So that was a really nice play, double scalding, and the Magnezone is really low. And if the Magnezone dies, Celestealer Stealer actually was the entire team besides. Mew can well whisp it and Kelly can scald burn it, but other than that, Cecilia was the entire team after Manu Zone goes down, so Falls has to switch out and it's looking a bit better for ABR now. He goes into Volcarona. So as long as he didn't T-Bolt there, this was a fine play. I mean Falls wasn't staying in there with a Magnezone versus a versus a Gastrodon. So that was a nice play on ABR's part. And Fire Blast as Kelly would have been dead if he hit the last Fire Blast. Like, he couldn't have afforded to bring this in. But yeah, ABI is getting health back. Like, remember this was at 51 at one point, but the Grassy Dream brought it back up to 75. Well. Wow. Yeah, I'm just not gonna mention what I wanted to talk about now, because I don't want to miss any turns. This is a cool game.
And while well, he keeps making the castle on play, the thing is, uh, he keeps making the double type of bulu. The thing is, ABR doesn't lose much from doing this. Uh, Fault will have to catch ABR on the Mag uh, on the Celesteela eventually. Uh, the thing he has to make the switch into Magnezone, Zone, but he has to time it perfect. Like he has to time it perfectly. Like it's tough. Because if he gets it wrong, Magnezone is dead and the game is pretty much over. So let's literally just wall him down. He's either gonna Horn Leech or... Double into Magnus Zone or double into Mew. I think I could see... Oh, he goes into Magnus Zone and it doesn't work out. Maybe I'm making a really nice mid-ground play of Volcarona in there, like going Volcarona. It covers the Horn Leech play, it covers the double into Magnus Zone. I mean, he could have still Stone Edge there, but it was really unlikely to Stone Edge, because if he Stone Edges, Celestelia just eats it up completely, like basically recovers it with left, like with a few turns of leftovers and he gets rid of the damage. And yeah, this time he hits with Fire Blast, so the Kelly from Falls side goes down, and the Pinsel does get to come out. And I think he's gonna double into Magna Zone. He has to, and he doesn't make the double. He has knock off, which is uh, for Skarmory's that carry Shetchel. So he's gonna be knock off frustration. Quick attack SD question mark? No CC or off quick. Well, I assume that's the set, because quick attack is pretty mandatory. Maybe he doesn't have SD. Why is knock being clicked turn 36? They're saying he should have clicked it earlier. I get it. If he clicked it earlier, this would have been easier to worn down a little bit. Yeah, that makes sense. Like, I don't know why I clicked it now. But yeah, this is... Man, I think he had to make... A double into Cell Steeler there. Uh, into Magnus Zone. But at this point, it's looking really good for ABI. Oh my god! He does get the burn on top of this. I don't know if the burn was its game deciding at this point because it was looking really good for ABI. He did really change the momentum in his favor. He made some really nice mid-ground plays. The Volcarona play and on the Bulu, I liked that play a lot earlier. And he did predict Faults to double into Prince predicting the Magna Zone. He knew Faults was in the back and had to make some sort of plays. So I can understand ABR's play in that sense. Now that he got rid of the pins there, he can afford to lose a Celesteela. Specs Waltz, which clean knocks it out as it's fist of Celesteela. And yeah, ABR just wins this game with his Volcarona now. As long as he hits Fire Blast. Yeah, he has, still has to hit Fire Blast and he does connect. And ABR picks up the win for US East. US East is going to be 6 and 3 now, if I recall. Yeah, they should be 6 and 3. And Oceania. I don't remember if they're 0 and 3 or 1 and 2. But he has hidden power ground as expected. Doesn't have to risk a fire blast on the Magnus Zone. And Bugbus clean knocks out the Mew. Thank you guys for watching. It was a cool game. Yeah, really sorry for the short lag that we had. Hope you guys don't mind. I know I can talk about it really short. The other day we had some lag at the beginning of the sh um, Shake game, Shake It Up versus... Who was he playing again? The Shake It Up versus Nintendo game the other day. There was a little bit of lag at the beginning, but it's kind of frustrating for me because I put in all the work. I recorded like 6 or 7 games yesterday for you guys, and I was making some ads in the background, so my computer was lagging because I couldn't handle that. I like I did, It couldn't handle that. I wasn't expecting the game to start, I thought the game would start like 10 or 15 minutes later because I knew Sh I knew Shake was watching anime, or anime, however you pronounce that. So I basically expected that I would have a few more minutes time and then I could finish my thumbnail and close Photoshop but I didn't have that time. And so I still had my Photoshop open, I also had too many tabs on my browser open, that was my fault. Um, I will avoid that for sure. And yeah, this game there was only, uh, there was only a little bit of lag. Again, this game was. Ford said he's eating, he will play in about 15 minutes, and so I didn't expect the game to start, but they started 5 or 10 minutes earlier than I expected, so that's why I also had still had my Photoshop open in the background now, but ho thankfully this time only a little bit of like. Like it's just frustrating, I put in all this work, and then if people give thumbs down because of a little bit of lag, and I also know that my narration is um, sometimes not super. Like sometimes I make uh, mistakes. But it's just human, right? I record like six or seven games in a row sometimes for you guys. So like I know some people get home late from work or some people have to sleep at the times 
at the time the games happen so I this is one of the reasons why I do this um, so like people that cannot watch the games live can like what still watch them live quote unquote live I know it's just recorded but it's kind of like live because you guys can see the chat and the game it's basically like you live there the only difference is that you can talk in the chat but yeah I just wanted to say that and yeah I will do my best I, I know I left a comment on the other video that this won't happen again like and yeah I'm, I'll be hyped for the Prosh Brown game that should be happening later and thank you guys for watching and Abia picks up a win uh, I like the team that he brought this time <laughs> last time he brought some T-Wave spin which was a bit weird but he deserves his win thank you guys for watching and Dokush signing out